windows eats corn the long way. And I'm gonna tell you why here in a minute. In no particular order of severity, this is why, in my opinion, Microsoft Windows sucks. If you install Windows on an older computer, you might have to spend an hour finding and installing drivers. If you try to like upgrade your computer to Windows 11, say you have Windows 10 or Windows 7, and you try to upgrade to Windows 11, you might get a message saying your computer is not compatible. And then, if you're tech savvy or you know how to research on the internet, you perform some type of bypass hack and you install it anyway. Did Microsoft lie? They just finished telling you your computer is not compatible with Windows 11, but an hour later you have it installed on your computer anyway. Why is that? Because Microsoft wants to control you and your computer, and they want to track what you do. Another thing is Windows forces you to use Edge, the Edge browser, but Edge is different because um, it, it's got tools that Microsoft implements, and they try to make it better and faster and things like that. Well, that's all cool and stuff. But here's the thing, if you're not computer savvy, Microsoft does a great job of making it difficult to use another browser like Brave or Chrome. Have you ever tried to set your default browser of choice? What happens? You try to do it, you have to click around, you gotta figure out how to do it and they make it kind of difficult. And I'm gonna show you right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna open up Microsoft Edge. I'm gonna download Chrome. What you're seeing here on the screen is basically uh, Windows 10 installed on a virtual machine. Here's what happens. I did a search for Google Chrome so I can download the app. And then you get this message right here saying, there's no need to download a new browser. Microsoft recommends using browser uh, Microsoft Edge for a fast, secure, modern web experience that can help save you time and money. So yeah, they're not, they're not making you use Edge, but man, they try really hard to get you to do that. And that's... This is my opinion. I don't like all this advertising, okay? If I want to use a different browser, I want to freaking use a different browser. It's my computer, right? We're not going to use Edge. Well, we're using Edge right now, but I'm going to go ahead and download Chrome here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, I can install it. I can use it and all that. But when I go to set it as a default browser on this system, that's where things get kind of hairy. And then I get all pissed off and shut my computer down. Microsoft Edge runs on the same technologies as Chrome with the added trust of Microsoft. Let me close that stupid thing out. So I'm going to download Chrome for Windows 11 slash 10 64 bit. All right. Thanks for downloading. Just a few steps left. Yay. And someday it will start. Here we go. That's another problem with Windows. Every time you download an, uh, a .exe file, you got to wait forever to open it. Then you got to open the file, wait for it to give you the screen that says, you're about to screw up your computer with something other than Microsoft Edge. Are you sure you want to do this? And then you click yes. Okay, now it's installing finally. Let me close Edge out on your marks. Now, Google Chrome is a whole different story. They like to track you too and stuff, but you know, we're going to go ahead and show you what I'm talking about when you have a hard time setting your default browser. You're all waiting for that to install. What I was talking about a second ago was this software right here. It's called Scrivener. And if you've ever written books and published them and things like that, you might know what this is. And from what I understand, people even use it for their, their college paperwork. I've used it for a couple of, couple of pieces of my college work, but it's called Scrivener. It's for writing books and it, it makes it easy to um, format the book into chapters and sections and you can take notes in it and you can uh, do all kinds of neat stuff with it. It's, it's really, really good software. But they don't make it for Linux. They used to. They got all the way up to version 1.01, .01, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But then they stopped the project. They don't develop it for Windows any or for uh, Linux anymore. It's just available for iOS, Mac, and Windows nowadays. And you can still use uh, the old Scrivener software on Linux, and it works. Another thing with the Linux version, you can't. There's a piece of Amazon software that you install on Windows that works in conjunction with Scrivener, so that when you are ready to convert your file into a format that Amazon can publish easily while keeping your your formatting of the book the way you want it, you got to use Windows for that. Here's Chrome finally. 
Oh yeah, they got the stupid bar up here. And they don't ask you, do you want to install this search bar? They don't ask you. They just put it on there because they control your computer. You don't control your computer. All right, so it's installed. Now I'm going to close it out. To set it as your default browser on this Windows system, you're going to have to go into settings. So you go into settings and you go to apps. And Linux desktops like KD and GNOME have similar processes that you click, you click on a couple of things and then you set your default browser. But this over here is ridiculous. Click on default apps. You go to web browser and it says Microsoft Edge. You got to click on that. They still, still got the old fashioned Internet Explorer here, which is pretty much useless nowadays. So I want to choose Google Chrome as my default app. And then it says, before you switch, try Microsoft Edge. It's new, it's fast, and it's built for Windows 10. Check it out. And then in small print down here, it says switch anyway, then you click that. And then now it's switched to Google Chrome. I've done this many times, so I know how to do it. But if you know somebody that really doesn't know computers too well, no matter what the operating system is, and they want to use Chrome or some other browser instead of Microsoft Edge, and they go and click on some hyperlink or something, and Edge opens up, and they get all pissed off because that's not what they want to use. They want to use the other browser installed. For them to figure this out, it might be kind of difficult, but it's just kind of a pain in the butt to do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to open up this, uh, this software called Scrivener that I use to write books. In case you're wondering what kind of books, I don't write Linux books because even though I, I know quite a bit about Linux and I've been using Linux since, nine, since 1990, when was that? 98. 1998 is the first time I used Linux. I don't consider myself an expert and I don't see myself writing any books on Linux. But I've written uh, a novel, some short stories that I published, uh, and I also wrote a Spanish grammar book that I published. But this is what it looks like. And it's running slower than heck because I have OBS running in the background. This is what it is right here. It's pretty cool. You got your chapters over here. You can do some notes over here. So I've used it quite a bit. Now, when I don't have OBS and other stuff running in the background, this virtual machine runs really fast. It's this is uh, I'm using VirtualBox is what it is. I've used KVM. As a matter of fact, I have KVM installed on this computer and it's all set up and it works. But VirtualBox seems to work better for running windows in it oh yeah another thing i use microsoft for is turbotax because turbotax is not made to run on linux even though i can run it using software like bottles and i've done that i just don't trust bottles enough which is basically a front end to wine i just don't trust you enough that i'm going to be able to do my taxes and everything's going to be saved and i can i can submit it to the IRS and, and have no issues. So I, I just haven't just haven't used it for that. Even though I'm forced to use some of their software because of what I do and I use it at work because we have to, you know, I still can't stand it. Oh yeah, and then it takes a long time to shut down too. Linux machines, um, it doesn't even depend on what distro you use. I think every distro that I've installed and used just shuts down quickly. It, it kills all the apps that you're Currently using, if you leave them open, it'll it'll stop them. It'll shut down quickly. But uh, Linux, on the other hand, you can do all kinds of stuff with it, right? So some more about Windows and why it stinks. So another thing is you can't easily theme your desktop on Windows. You can do a couple things like maybe change some colors, change the wallpaper, things like that. But you can't, like especially in Windows 11, you can't move your taskbar around if you used to like it on the left side in older versions or on the right side or up on top of the screen. You can't do that anymore. It doesn't let you. You know, it's your computer, but you can't do what you want to do. As soon as you boot into your new computer that you just bought at Best Buy or on Amazon or whatever, you turn your computer on and you boot it up. And then as soon as you get it all set up, Microsoft throws advertisements in your face of apps you probably don't even want to use. Candy Crush and all these other things, right? And yeah, you can right click and delete those those apps which they're not installed yet but they're there because they're advertising to you and companies pay them to to do this and of course microsoft who is all about money will gladly accept their your payment for that they try to force some things on you i can't stand advertisements i can't stand commercials so another thing about windows 11 you can't install windows 11 home edition without a microsoft account or being connected to the internet yeah we're all gonna eventually be connected to the internet but if you can't for some reason 
You can't even use your computer. You can't set it up. You can't log in. And there's ways you can make it log into a, to a desktop, but it's just, you know, for the average user, they're not going to be able to figure it out, more than likely. And it's just frustrating for them, I'm sure. But I've been through that, too. The Microsoft App Store also sucks. It's clunky, and it sometimes takes forever to download and install apps. It's just junk. You know, the Microsoft or the, uh, the Linux distributions that I have used, and I've used a lot of them, you know, they, they have different pieces of software that you can use to download free and open source and sometimes even proprietary software straight from their repositories. And they make it so easy. Like GNOME has a GNOME software store. ED has Discover. Um, you got you got programs like Synaptic and Pac-Man and AMAC and all kinds of neat stuff on Linux. And it's all easy. Even from a command line, it's easy to install apps on Linux. As a matter of fact, command line, the command line installation of an app on Linux is often way faster than using a GUI. But it's all good. You know, if you don't you want to use if you don't want to use the Microsoft App Store, you have to search the internet for .exe files, which is potentially dangerous. You can end up downloading malware or viruses and then to get rid of the bad software, you have to run scanning software to move all the crap, which you most likely downloaded from the internet as well and comes with its own set of advertisements a lot of times, you know? And then you get the you get the apps where you know you download it, install it, and then it says Thank you for installing. In order to use it, you got to pay me $59. And then you end up uninstalling it because you can't do anything with it unless you dish out some cash. I know there's developers out there and their job is to develop software and that's how they're in their living. But man, if you get into Linux and you discover everything that Linux has to offer by, you know, as far as software goes, you're going to love it. So if you haven't tried it, uh, you should try it. And if you're watching this video, chances are you're probably a Linux user already, and that's cool. So you're like me, and you, you, you like all this stuff. So the App Store, if you don't want to use the App Store, you're going to search for .exe files. It's a pain in the butt. In short, even though this is your computer, you can't do what you want with it, because Microsoft controls your computer. Could your computer be your computer or Microsoft's computer? It's your computer, right? You bought it. But it doesn't feel like you own it, because you got some big tech company controlling your desktop. So tech support, let's talk a little bit about tech support. All right. If you've ever called Microsoft tech support, which I have many years ago, if you ever called Microsoft tech support because you messed up your computer really bad, chances are you'll be talking to someone in India or some other country because Microsoft wants to save money by contracting other companies to do their tech support. There's nothing wrong with talking to somebody in India. That's, that's not where I'm going with this. The point is they're, they outsource the work because they're cheap and they, they want to save money so they can keep more, more of their money. And uh, you may ask, how do I know this? Well, because I used to be a Microsoft tech support uh, worker. I used to do that for a living uh, years ago. That was, that was about 20 years ago. And I supported um, Windows 98. And Windows 98 Second Edition and Windows Millennium, which is part of the worst operating system in the world, Millennium. But that's what I did. I did Microsoft Tech Support, and I learned a lot about Microsoft and then the you know ins and outs of of the operating system, you know the registry and the tools that it has and stuff like that. And I enjoyed it back then. And that was even after I started using Linux. But I was learning stuff. I was helping people fix the computer. And uh, while I was doing this Microsoft Tech Support, I even got a, uh, in trouble a couple of times because. I would spend, you know, an hour or so sometimes literally fixing somebody's computer, helping them, you know, to fix stuff and then run them through commands in a shell prompt and a command prompt and stuff like that. And uh, they say, why are you taking so long? You should only take 10 minutes for each call. And that would take forever because I was actually helping them fix it. While other people around me, you know, didn't get told because they listened to our supervisors who said, you know, give them a solution, tell them to try it and call you back if it doesn't work. And that's how it was all day. And there were people that were getting little awards and certificates because they took 200 calls that day. And me, you know, I might have done like 11 or 12. Why? Because I was actually helping the customer and I was fixing their stuff. But I was the one getting in trouble. And I had customers saying, hey, let me talk to your manager. Thanks for fixing my computer. I had all this stuff and I didn't want to lose it. And you fixed it and I appreciate it. And you're awesome. 
can I talk to your manager? And I'd give the phone to the manager. And, oh, yeah, that's great, blah, blah, blah. And then when we hung up, the manager would be chewing me out because it took too long on the call. They would literally say, give them a solution, show them how to do it, tell them to do it, hang up the phone. And then if it doesn't work, then call back and we'll help you again. And that's what happened with a lot of customers and customers are frustrated. And it's all about money. So that's how I know. Because I need to be a Microsoft tech support dude. I was a guy that when you called Microsoft, I said, thanks for calling Microsoft. How can I help you today? That was me. And then let me tell you a little bit about uh, the outsourcing that Microsoft does. I worked for a company. Um, I won't say the name of the company, but the initials are Convergis. So I worked for Convergis. And, you know, I did this, Mic this Microsoft export stuff, right? So we're going along and we're, you know, we're doing our job and all that. And then one day our group of manager comes to, to our group of people and says, uh, I need, I'm going to pick five of the best tech support guys to help train some people in India because their Microsoft is opening a new tech support call center in India. And we want to pick the top five best guys to run through some simulations, some call simulations and, and teach these guys how to answer the phones and what to say and things like that. And the guys in India, they're already tech savvy. They, they already knew Microsoft Windows pretty good and stuff like that. So we didn't really teach them how to fix computers. We just taught them how to do the calls. So I say we because I was one of the five guys that they chose for this project. So we spent a week doing this. And uh, we had the guys, you know, we were talking to the guys from India. And, and we would run them through the whole protocol, you know, helped them out. And it was all good. And, you know, we felt good about ourselves because, hey, we were one, we were the top five in the in the place and we got to uh, teach them and stuff like that. And, and we're appreciated and blah, 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 right? Yeah, that was a bunch of baloney. The day, the Monday after we did all that training, they called all us employees into a big room. They said, hey, we're sorry to tell you this, but uh, the project is shutting down. And we know what was going on. The, the call center in India that we just finished training took our jobs because they do it for $2 and room and board. Back then, I was making nine fifty an hour answering calls, which sucked in the first place. But those guys do it for 2 bucks and a plate of food. So that's what they did. And we lost our jobs. Now, they offered us uh, another job with the same company. They said, well, you can do the, the, the Yahoo tech support. So a lot of us went and did that. And some of, some of us just quit. I went ahead and did the Yahoo tech support for a while. And that really stunk. But anyway, that's how I know about how the call centers run and how they work. And so I want to thank you guys for listening. I appreciate your time. Um, if, you, uh, if you like the video, click on the like button, please. If you didn't like it, click the thumbs down. That's fine. But if you do that, if you could do me a favor and, and write a comment, tell me why. This way I can improve and get better. I'd appreciate that. If you really liked it, you can click on the subscribe button. So that'd be cool. All right. So for now, that's, that's going to be everything. I know this was a short list because Microsoft sucks in a lot of ways. And these, these are just some things that I just thought up on the fly that I know about. and. Uh, if I talked about how Microsoft stinks uh, in its totality, I'd be here for probably like 10 hours, maybe longer. And I know you guys don't want to waste your time on that because I don't. But there's my two cents. And I appreciate you, uh, your time, and thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later.